Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Hart and I'll be presenting Lesson 11 for November the 13th, 2022. We're still in Unit 3 entitled, We Are God's Artwork. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Wisdom as Enlightenment of Heart. Our devotion reading is taken from uh, Psalm 16. Background scriptures taken from the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Also, Acts chapter 19, and the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And we will be studying today from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. Our key verse reads, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. As taken from the book of Ephesians chapter uh, 1 verse 18 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to uh, deepen uh, your understanding of God's overall purpose for us as Christ's body and the church. Secondly, to experience the immeasurable gift of intercessory prayer. And then thirdly, to offer an interse intercessory prayer as an active demonstration of your love for someone for whom you are thankful. We have two outlines today that will be a part of our discussion. The first one uh, deals with enlightenment and uh, we will be talking about what it is and then the second outline is also entitled enlightenment and our focus will be on why. So we certainly thank and praise God for this privilege, this opportunity to be able to share our Sunday School lesson with you today. We encourage you to uh, get your Bible and be prepared to take some notes. We have quite a bit of ground to cover with you today and we certainly thank and praise God for uh, the faith that we have in Jesus Christ our Lord and and we pray that you are growing in the knowledge of the truth. We're going to focus on a little bit of that today as we continue our lesson. But I want to open uh, with uh, a passage from Proverbs uh, chapter 4 as we think about uh, this lesson uh, and I want to look at verse 7 you all have seen this many times Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting get understanding and we want to focus on that today as we lift this this prayer or at least a portion of it uh, from the Apostle Paul. But I want to read uh, some of the uh, biblical context uh, that is offered in our uh, quarterly and then I want to read a little bit from our lesson standard. But it says Paul composed this letter from prison in Rome about AD 60 or 62. He first ministered in Ephesus about 10 years earlier, that would be AD 53, before returning and establishing a strong church in the city. His purpose was to share with these believers the tremendous spiritual wealth they, they uh, had in Christ and how they would draw on it for meaningful Christian living amid a paganistic culture. The first half of uh, the book of Ephesians uh, chapters uh, 1 through 3 is theological and describes these spiritual blessings. The second half of the book of Ephesians chapter 4 uh, through 6 lays out how the believer moves from doctrinal principles to spiritual practice. So we want to keep that in mind and then from uh, our lesson standard. Uh, our text, uh, today's text, picks up exactly where lesson 10 uh, left off. That would have been Ephesians chapter 1 uh, verses 1 through 14. But 
most of most letters in Paul's time offered a brief word of thanks to whatever God uh, the right of worship Paul followed this practice in most of his letters in the New Testament praising only the true God and he used um, uh, the Thanksgiving not just as a formality uh, part of a good letter writing but as a way to introduce ideas that would develop later in the letter. So we want to uh, encourage you, hopefully you can read uh, all of the book of Ephesians, it's only six chapters. Uh, and, if, and as you engage this book, I want to lift a couple of some words that uh, um, bear uh, recognition uh, as you read the book of Ephesians will give you just a little bit to put you on a path when you run into these words uh, uh, as you read this epistle. The first word is I-N, in, right? It occurs about 90 times. Uh, uh, the word I-N stresses the truth of the b believer's union with Christ in death resurrection ascension and present position the fact of the believers position in Christ permeates the entire thought of this epistle so as you, when you see the word I in or in in the text or in the passage of, of scripture uh, Paul is emphasizing uh, um, that this is this is the position this is the actual state of affairs if you will for every believer assuming that we have uh, believed uh, uh, we've heard the gospel we've believed we've made a confession unto salvation we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise all of these tenets you will see in the book of Ephesians and so when when you see that you are in in Christ in a position uh, the next thing would be uh, how do we draw uh, from this position since we're in the body of Christ we've been uh, uh, moved uh, 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 transferred into the body of Christ via the Holy Spirit based on our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, the second word and we, we just want to highlight these and I want you to do your own study uh, when you run into the word grace right in this epistle uh, the third word you will see in this epistle is the word spiritual right pay attention to that word and then do your uh, your homework and background on why that is in the text the next word we'll we run into quite a bit in the book of Ephesians is the word body right it's a metaphor uh, describing our positional union with Christ right so we want to pay attention to that word body uh, the next word we want to pay attention to in the epistle is the word live right it, 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 it lifts some things that we should understand uh, 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 the word live refers to our behavior within the body of Christ and how we act in union with him uh, uh, him being Christ who is the head of the church uh, the next word we run into is the word heavenly right or heavenly realms or some translations would say heavenly sphere but watch that word heavenly it has some uh, context as well that you want to study uh, to see why it is there and then the last word uh, um, is mystery right you'll see the word mystery in the text in this epistle uh, this mystery does not denote uh, something unscrutable but a hidden truth held in secret till the proper time for its revelation uh, in the divine program so this is what it means uh, when we see the word mystery uh, it's not something that 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 is new right or that is not, has not been revealed but God chose to reveal Christ at the proper time right and so this mystery uh, uh, in the divine order in the divine program simply means when God decided to reveal it when he decided to set it forth uh, uh, and so 
a believer should be able to understand uh, if you are in union with Christ uh, we should understand what grace means to us we should understand that we are spiritual people by definition we should understand how we are connected to the body we should understand how we live in relation to that position we should understand spiritual things or the heavenly realm uh, that just simply underscores where the believer lives and where we wage effective warfare it's in the heavenly sphere right and then we should understand uh, what mystery how that relates to us as believers and how we were saved uh, 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 all of us were saved at different times but it was at the proper time it was at the time designated in the divine program Christ appeared right in the divine program uh, he came uh, as the Lord had prophesied he is a fulfillment or the fulfillment of the Old Testament types right and so we want to be able to remember these because these are going to come up uh, uh, in the book of Ephesians as you do your your study and then lastly I want to touch on uh, the fact of, uh, of enlightenment uh, as we deal with these two outlines today uh, what enlightenment is and why it is uh, and we should understand uh, take note of the fact that the word illumination also is used uh, alongside of the word enlightenment so uh, you might see illumination uh, you might see the word enlightenment uh, and, and so both of those are similar and they uh, help to underscore the the, the role uh, that the Holy Spirit plays uh, in our lives and so uh, when we were talking about or asking uh, the question or listening to the prayer part of it in our key verse uh, Paul is praying here he says I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order uh, um, that you may know the hope to which he has called you uh, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people so if Paul is praying that we would be enlightened or illuminated who would do that right who would initiate this illumination and we're going to give you some more uh, context for this as we go along in this passage uh, because Paul is lifting a prayer uh, that's in line with the role of the Holy Spirit in terms of enlightening us or uh, uh, illuminating our understanding so we can grow with uh, uh, in the knowledge of the truth apart from the Holy Spirit uh, uh, we cannot do this on our on our own right uh, we cannot enlighten ourselves uh, uh, in a deeper way as the context of, of this passage uh, would would help us to understand we read and we study but it still takes the action uh, the revelation of God to broaden uh, or to deepen uh, our understanding of the text so we can understand better appreciate the position that we're in and how to draw from that position so this is an ongoing activity uh, by the Holy Spirit in the lives of the believer to help them to uh, to maneuver and to grow and to be confident of who they are and uh, and, and what they have as this first outline uh, would lift today and so uh, we need to be able to to have a, a, a realization about our position in the body of Christ who are you and what are you and how can you draw from this position and so it's, it's very important that we uh, uh, grow uh, uh, there's a human component to this prayer and we're going to talk about that as well so let's let's get into this first outline of enlightenment and we're going to be focusing on what it is 
from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 through 18a and I want to read this from uh, the NIV translation and Paul is talking here in verse 15 he says for this reason ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all for all God's people uh, verse 16 I have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers I keep asking verse 17 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better in uh, verse 18 and I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so Paul is praying he's lifting uh, this petition before God on behalf of, 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 of the saints at, at Ephesus and Paul is 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 talking about what he want what he wants God to do uh, 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 in their lives, right? So uh, 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 for this reason, right? Uh, they they have had uh, 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 the church at Ephesus. They have done well in terms of their their faith, uh, in terms of their adherence to the Word of God. But Paul wanted his readers to understand the process of their salvation and spiritual inheritance right so first Paul laid out the basic principles of salvation in Christ the blessings of election sonship redemption and the ministry of the Holy Spirit you'll see that in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 uh, through 14 then he explained the method by which the believers could understand and appropriate it all uh, uh, talking about divine enlightenment so Paul interceded in prayer on behalf of these Gentile converts to Christianity having heard of their faith in Christ and love for all the saints Paul is giving thanks for this right Paul is giving thanks to God on behalf of these individuals. But knowing the spiritual blessing they possess, Paul prayed that they might know God personally and intimately. Why is that relevant? Why is that important that we know God in such a way? So notice that Paul specifically thanked God for uh, the intangible virtues of faith and love among all their spiritual uh, blessings but so often the motivation for prayers of thanksgiving in the faith community is for numerical and economic growth and so sometimes and, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with these types of, of prayers that we want God to do some tangible things for us that God that we want God to do uh, some external things if you will that we want these material blessings but but at, it, at its core right uh, what does God want on behalf of his people uh, sure God can bless us with a lot of material things but the key here is that Paul is talking about the inner man Paul is talking about uh, uh, what is core to the believer is to grow in the position since God has saved us and via the Holy Spirit and translated us into the realm of the Holy Spirit or the church if you will uh, via the power of the Holy Spirit we need to grow in that environment we need to grow in that position uh, that we might be able to draw from that position in terms of how we are going to live in the power of God in the presence of God and how we are going to uh, wage effective warfare with with our adversaries with the unseen forces even the devil himself so it's important that we understand that we uh, be able to internalize scripture we need to be focusing on the works of the Holy Spirit how God is working in our lives what is he changing about us how he is maturing us to be the kind of people uh, that he would want us to be but as we talked about 
this word enlightenment and we also uh, focused on the fact that this also speaks of illumination and I want to give you some some points about that when we think about illumination and conviction so Christians uh, uh, knowledge of divine things is more than knowledge of biblical words and theological ideas it is an understanding of the reality and relevance of the works of God testified by scripture so when we think about the natural man from 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 who does not have the spirit even though familiar with Christian ideas that individual still lacks this deeper understanding and is like uh, the blind leaders of the blind I want you to look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 14 watch this only the, the Holy Spirit who searches the deep things of God that's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2 verse uh, 10 can bring this understanding to minds and hearts darkened by sin so you remember when we were in sin uh, 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 before we were saved uh, uh, following the dictation of our flesh and the lust of the flesh our minds were darkened we were not able to understand sure perhaps we've gone or did go to church and we perhaps even read the Bible and that kind of thing but but we had no deep root about the spiritual things of God because we were natural uh, uh, at our core we had not been moved into uh, the body of Christ but now that the believer has been moved into uh, 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 the body of Christ the Holy Spirit takes on removing that darkness and and offering and bringing light to our understanding and to our hearts I'm trying to help somebody here to understand you need the Holy Spirit to broaden your horizons if you will to deepen your understanding about the biblical text so you can appreciate where you are and how you got there right so we need to have in our arsenal of, of, of understanding the basic tenets of what it means to be saved sure we tell people uh, 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 that we want them to be saved and we want them to to come to Christ and give their lives to Christ but what is the benefit of that and we need to be able to unpack salvation in a way that helps uh, individuals who are natural can understand the Spirit of God and move toward revelation and so this is what has happened to to us uh, by via the Holy Spirit uh, uh, illuminating our mind so it is called a spiritual understanding because it is an understanding given uh, by the Holy Spirit I want you to look at Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 uh, Luke chapter 24 verse 25 and the first epistle of John chapter 5 verse 20 so those who along with correct instruction from the scriptures have an anointing from the Holy One who knows all things so I want you to look at the first epistle of John chapter 2 uh, verse 20 so the work of the Spirit in imparting this understanding is called illumination or enlightening see that so it is not a giving of a new revelation but a work within us that enables us to grasp and to affirm the revelation of the Bible as it is read preached and taught so we need to appreciate this position that we're in and how we got there and what it is and now that we know what it is and how it functions uh, we'll be better suited to draw from it right we need this it is vital uh, for the believer to 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 engage but sin clouds our minds and wheels so that we miss and resist the force of scripture right but the spirit however opens and unveils our minds uh, and 
and attunes our hearts so that we understand what God has revealed. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 14 through 16, chapter 4 verse 6, and then we're reading Ephesians uh, chapter 1, right? But, but illumination is the application of God's revealed truth, truth to our heart so that we grasp what uh, uh, as reality for ourselves what the scripture text said. You ever read? your Bible and you didn't understand what you what you were reading you didn't understand you 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 you, you left maybe perhaps discouraged because you read it and you thought you you understood it but you really don't have uh, the understanding that you would like to have of the Bible itself and certainly of a particular passage and sometimes we shy away from uh, parts of the Bible because we don't understand it Right, but what really needs to happen? We don't need to shy away from it, but we need to seek and pray. It is exactly the way the Apostle Paul is praying here for the saints at Ephesus that our that 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 God would intervene. Right? James says that in the very first chapter of his epistle, he said, "If any man lacks wisdom, what should you do? You should ask God." Right? You should ask God to open up your understanding so you'll be able to grasp the, uh, grasp the biblical text so you can appreciate it for what it is and apply it to your lives and be encouraged by it because it belongs to you and it belongs to the position that God has placed us in. I hope this is making sense. So, But the human part, as I said earlier, uh, 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 that undergirds this prayer is our willingness to study, to read and to study. Sometimes we don't study, we just read. We don't try to unpack the scripture and we're left uh, uh, with sort of the surface understanding. But sometimes we have to dig into the word of God. It takes time to uh, uh, pull these things apart uh, with perhaps another translation or two, perhaps with commentary, perhaps in prayer, all of these things, uh, and then waiting on God to open up our understanding concerning or to enlighten us as to what the biblical text is all about, right? And this is what Paul is praying for, right? We have to pray. So, illumination. Uh, uh, although illumination by the Spirit begins the process or order of salvation, uh, it continues throughout the life of the believer. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter four. I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter six, verse four, and Hebrews chapter ten, verse thirty-two. The Holy Spirit leads us to a deeper understanding of God. That's in the Gospel according to Saint John chapter sixteen, verse uh, thirteen. Uh, prompting both repentance, this would be the conviction part uh, uh, for sins uh, that we commit, and assurance of God's grace and the certainty of our election. Listen, don't let sin be a stumbling block that you think it's something that God has not seen. Uh, when we read the word of God and we find that our actions are, uh, are, are an offense to God, then we are convicted by the word of God. That's a still a part of illumination because the Holy Spirit role, according to John chapter 16, is not only to lead but to convict. And so when he convicts us that we've offended God because we've read the word of God and we understood it, and then we can go in prayer and ask God for his forgiveness, and we are confident because we know that this position uh, that, that, that uh, uh, God has put us in doesn't fade away, right? So even though God may chasten us, you still belong to him. So we should not uh, 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 let sin uh, uh, reign in our lives certainly but we should not treat God as though he has never seen it but when we read the word of God then the, the, the human part is for us to believe it and act upon appreciate what it says to us and that we obey or comply uh, uh, with the word of God 
and then we move on and we begin to grow in practical application what I used to say years ago taking the gospel off of the pages and incorporate it into our very lives uh, 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 has a lot to do with our understanding of it right and and the wisdom that the text offers so just to dig into that a little bit deeper we want to be able to appreciate uh, what's happening here in this prayer and 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 what this enlightenment or illumination is all about so yes God can do these external things but we want to be able uh, to be the kind of people that 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 uh, uh, that understand the spiritual riches uh, that that we already per uh, possess as God's people uh, you know many times and I, I've said this over the years we may be praying about something that we already have right we may be praying about something that God has already given to us but because we have not uh, uh, our understanding uh, has not been illuminated or enlightened from the scriptures we keep asking God for things that he's already done and I know that to be true because Ephesians chapter 1, I believe verse 13, says that we have been given every spiritual blessing, right? Everything that God knew that we needed to live uh, as effective Christians and to wage effective warfare has been done, has been accomplished, right? Have been given. That's literally what the text says. So how do we get from uh, what God, uh, uh, what we may be asking God to do to what God has already done, right? All right, so let's, let's move on to uh, this question here. How does Paul's request for spiritual enlightenment motivate your desire to walk after spiritual things more than uh, pray for physical blessings? So, Matthew 6 33 right first seek ye the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all these other things will be added uh, so 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 what is the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness we need to be able to unpack that uh, first seek ye the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness how do I do that right what is the human component of that text right that applies to me that I can apply to my life what do I need to do so Paul is doing the divine thing by offering prayer but the saints at Ephesus they have to comply they have to be willing to cooperate with the Spirit of God they have to be willing to obey uh, the will of God and so that's our part right so if Paul is praying uh, the least that these saints could do is agree that's the very least right so our second outline is talking about enlightenment uh, uh, we're looking at why this is uh, Ephesians chapter 1 uh, verse 18 B to verse 23 and again from the NIV translation the Bible says in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people let me just pause right here that you may know the hope right to which he has called you what is the hope of God right hope is that we might see him face to face right the hope is, is that we not be turncoats that we not uh, 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 shrink as the book of Hebrews would help us to understand from this uh, uh, great salvation this is a great salvation and we see too often in our culture in our world sometime even in the church the face of hopelessness because the word of God says a particular thing we have not been enlightened by those scriptures or illuminated and so we have or least likely to hope in things that we don't understand right hope this is making sense verse 19 and his uh, incomparably great power for us who believe uh, that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Let me just pause here. This is something that uh, our evangelism class was talking about and the importance of power. That same Holy Ghost power 
that raised Jesus from the dead is in every believer. Just think about that. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead, right, is in you, is in me, is in that believer. He's not just sitting there just to be sitting there uh, uh, in you, but he's in you to affect a work in our lives. So if God was able to raise Jesus from the dead via the Holy Spirit, and that power is in you and in me or in every believer, where does our hope stand now? Where is our confidence in the things or in the face of adversity, perhaps that we don't think that can be done or God can, cannot accomplish it, but you have the Holy Ghost? It doesn't make sense that God is uh, 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 somehow uh, uh, handcuffed that he cannot perform a work in our lives if we believe that when we got saved, we had to essentially believe, right? We had to confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead and the Bible says that you're saved. So in effect under that, that, that principle of salvation, the Holy Spirit according to St. John chapter 14, 15, and 16 has taken up residence in that believer. So we have the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in us. That's what the Bible says. But how can you appreciate that? Right? How can you draw from three, the divine order, three in you to make one? Right? How can we make this work? How can we cause this to be effective in our lives? So you get some idea now while Paul is praying that these individuals realize that they are not alone. Right? You are not by yourself. And this is a, a tactic of the adversary in that realm that we live in is to convince us of the hopeless situation that we're in. Nobody can help us. God has forsaken us. We're all by ourselves. How can that be when three is in us? But without being able to appreciate the text, we can't draw from it. Without that illumination, we can't see that we're praying for God to come to a place where he already sits. <laughs> right? God is in. So everywhere you go, he goes. Right? What did you think Jesus meant when he said he would never leave you nor forsake you? Why do you think you have to call God as though he's far away when he's in you? We need to think about these things. And we certainly need to be praying about these things. Because God has already done it. If, I, if that makes sense. He's already accomplished it. Better term. In our lives. So we just need to appreciate and thank him for what he's already done. You are in the best position you and I as believers that we could ever been in, that we have ever been in. And so what we need to do now is start going to the spiritual bank and writing a bunch of withdrawal slips, right? Taking out, right? Draw out as much as you want, as much as you can appreciate, as much as you understand that the Bible is saying to you, take it out of the bank. Because it belongs to you. It's your account. It's my account. Right? And each one of us, God has uniquely positioned us to draw from what he has done in our lives. You have a history of blessings in your life. That's not a coincidence. That's a reality of I will never leave you. Never forsake you. Right? This is the confidence. Paul had it. Uh, this said it this way. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. He said I, I, I'm confident. Right. 
that what's in me will be performed until the day of Jesus Christ. Right? Read a little bit more. Verse 21. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, er and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So, let's understand this. What is God saying here? What is Paul saying here? That in verse 20, he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand, at his right hand in the heavenly realm, far above all rule and authority. Right? We have the greatest authority in us. There is none to compare. Verse 22, And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church. This is the position of Christ. So how are we drawing from that? Which is his body, the church. That, that's the believers. The fullness of him who feels everything in every way. Right? So after praying that these believers know God personally through spiritual enlightenment, Paul explains why this spiritual understanding is vital to the believer's relationship with God. First, they needed to know the hope of their calling. Two things you need to know in this life, right? What you were created for and are you about that, right? We need to be purposeful people because of the hope that's been placed in us through the calling. Not just to the particular gift, but to salvation itself. The hope of his calling refers to the completeness of salvation, culminating with believers' glorification and freedom from the presence of sin. We're living in a sinful world, but because of the power of God working in us, the position that we're in, we're not drawn to it, though God didn't have to remove us just so we might escape sin. But as John chapter 17, Jesus prayed for his disciples that God wouldn't take them out of the world, but leave them in the world because they had work to do, but keep them, right? So there's a lot that has been invested in us, right? It goes on, Paul's final request was that they know the extent of God's power working on their behalf. I used to say this years ago. I used to hear my mom say this all the time. She said, baby, let him use you. Right? Let him use you. Right? Let him have the, the, the right of way in your life. Yield. Right? Some would say, let go and let God. We understand these things. So we can appreciate the extent. But if we keep God in a box as though he cannot do anything because we are not appreciating the Bible and the text that we are reading, we think God is limited. Keep in mind, that same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead resides in the believer. Keep that in mind. Don't forget that you have, you and I have resurrection power in us. And it's working. It's effective. Every day. Of our lives. We need to stop saying something told me. And put, the, put a name. That the Holy Spirit is illuminating. And enlighten us to at least understand who he is. Right. We need to know who it is and what's happening and why it's happening in our lives, right? So I think we have shared, uh, at least put us on a, a path here to, uh, this is a beautiful epistle. Uh, 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 it, it, it likens to the book of Romans, also uh, uh, underscoring, drawing from the position that we're in. And, you know, when we better understand, you and I will be able to better praise. You and I will be able to better worship when we understand, right? When we can realize we'll have a, a, a better grasp on how uh, 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 
sin is a deterrent right it's an obstruction to our lives unbelief is an obstruction to who we are as children of God we have to make sure that we as Paul uh, 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 writes to Timothy fight the good fight of faith because the adversary when we read the word of God he tries to put blinders on so we don't see what the text says and sometimes we cooperate with the adversary by not believing what we're reading you have to watch out for those things and essentially what the devil is doing is robbing us of understanding right robbing us that this is a moment where God wants to enlighten and illuminate us and here we are struggling with the enemy who is trying to get us to see that what we're reading for some reason is not possible then why is it there why would God write something that's not effective why would God give you a word that cannot produce why would he reside in you and cannot produce a holy individual some things just don't make sense but this does All right so I hope trust and pray we have given you something to think about it and I'm gonna follow the Apostle Paul's tone and I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna pray for all of us I'm gonna follow suit with this prayer that we may be able to appreciate that we might be able to see God for who he is for what he is doing and why he is doing it in our lives and we need to thank him for the position that he placed us in in the divine order father in the name of Jesus God we thank you for such an hour as this and I just want to follow the the, the, the tone and uh, uh, the template of the Apostle Paul and, and God I just want to pray for the saints today I want to pray for all of us God that we might appreciate who you are and what you have done in our lives and God we pray that you would open up our understanding help us to see the biblical text for what it is it is a blessing it is a revelation of Jesus Jesus Christ from start to finish help us to be able to draw from the things that you have already done help us to be able to say Lord thank you for saving us and thank you for saving me and thank you for saving our family members and, and, and God give us a mind and a love and an attitude for pray to pray for others that they may come into the knowledge of the truth God we pray that as we sit down to study and to read your word that you would Open it up to us that we might be able to appreciate it. Open up our eyes. Pull the skim off that we might be able to see the handiwork of God in the biblical text. God, we thank you for residing in us. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for every good and every perfect gift that has come down from the Father of life. Thank you for everything that you've already done. This is a done deal in our lives because we are saved today and we want to be able to appreciate it so we can give you the glory, the honor, and the praise that, that you so rightly do, uh, are due and that we would worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke every adversary that comes against the understanding of your people and comes against our eyes that we cannot see, that comes against our ears that we can't hear, it comes against our heart that we can't be loyal toward the things that we see that are plain as day in Scripture. God, we just thank you. We, we pray that you would empower us to live as the Scripture says. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Saints, I love you today. And just know that I love this scripture. This is uh, one of my favorite books in the Bible. Because it sets forth some things uh, uh, that we already have. It, it places emphasis on who we are and what God has done. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. We say God bless you.